Hey guys, welcome back. This is Tex and we are here back in Orbiter for the second part of this new video series that I'm doing. Uh, again, as I mentioned in the first part, I'm not really back per se. I just uh, definitely had a little bit of an inspiration from David Courtney's comeback playing Orbiter made me realize that I did want to play it a little bit. So I thought it'd be fun to do a flight together, uh, less structured, less cinematic, just really just kind of a fun flight together. So if you missed the first part, we, uh, we did the planning for this flight where we are here at Cape Canaveral in the XR2. Uh, we're going to be looking to take off from the Earth here. We have a flight plan all set up to go, uh, to fly to Venus. We're going to slingshot Venus back to Earth, and we're going to slingshot Earth out to Mars. There's a space station, the fuel service station, in orbit around Mars where we're going to plan on rendezvousing with that. Uh, and then from there, I'm not really sure if we will just end the series, if I have time to do any more, or possibly land on the surface of Mars and maybe even come back to Earth if we have time. All right, guys, so without further ado, jumping right in here. Now, we've already gone through the flight plan. Check out the last part if you missed it. But uh, I think what we need to do here is uh, plan on uh, getting off the ground sometime soon. So the uh, for this particular plan, we're looking again at a 55-432 ejection date, and we are uh, exactly one day out from that right now. So we have time. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is actually use a combination of interplanetary and transex here because uh, previously if I recall I would go to this page here we would um, first of all let me adjust the view on this uh, okay view on graph projection on plan so as I recall we would come here and adjust the uh, the eject orientation and I think you want to get this white line kind of laid right over your position here um, and you want to see what what what's the best heading you can get ideally the best heading uh, to launch fuel efficiency wise is 90 degrees but with this particular flight plan we're not going to be able to launch 90 degrees it looks like our best heading is going to be somewhere in the 136 neighborhood so of course 90 degrees is due east and you're taking advantage of you know the most of the uh, the velocity that you already have from being on the Earth, from the Earth rotating. So essentially, uh, the, the more due east you can launch, the more fuel efficient it's going to be because you're going to be capturing uh, more of that velocity that the Earth inherently already has from its rotation, if I remember that correctly. So we're not going to be able to hit 90 degrees with this flight, but as I recall, we would basically, I think if we took off right now, we'd fly a heading of 137. Um, and it looks like our ejection point it would, is right back here behind us. So we'd essentially fly around the Earth one time, and then we would come around here and we would reach our uh, ejection point. However, that would probably be a little early because we're a day out until uh, we're really supposed to be ejecting. So I think we probably would be better served to sit here on the ground a little bit longer until... Um, until we get closer to that ejection window. So what I'm going to do is pull up interplanetary, and let's see if I can remember this one. I'm not as schooled in this one. I think we go to, uh, actually, let me do it this way. Uh, I think we go to interplanetary over here. We go to menu. I believe we go to course and target intercept. We target Mars. Oh, shoot. No, not Mars. We target Venus. Uh, did I misspell that? Probably. There we go. Um, and then let's see. GET. We don't want GET. We want to change that. We go to configuration. This is where we change that, right? Yes, MJD. Perfect. Now we go back to menu. Go back to course. Okay, so we target intercept. We're targeting Venus, sources Earth. Uh, this is where we're going to come in and input our ejection date. So this is where we can set this to 55432.628. And then our encounter date is here. That's 555.97.714. Okay, so we're looking at a total delta V of about 3.4, and that's about what we're seeing over here. So total, uh, what is this, total 
flight total essentially the total flight time i forgot what the time of flight maybe 165 days out to venus all in all though based on my calculations including the sling around venus sling around earth and then arriving at mars it's going to be about 965 days let's look at our locks again we have uh, 1097 days so we should have enough locks on board to do this all right um all right, so that's done. Now what we need to do is come over here, open interplanetary. I think we share that side, and then we go to surface launch. And that looks right. 30, no, sorry, um, heading, heading 43 degrees. What do we have on transacts? I think it was, it was 137. So it would be either direction, I guess. So it looks like the next launch window according to um interplanetary is i guess in 53 is this 53,000 seconds i forget what that is uh but we are looking at a heading of 43 degrees so i guess what i'm going to do here is i'm going to uh time accelerate and so we're going to watch the time counting down here and i think we hit projection to self Okay, so let's time accelerate and just get around to the next launch window according to interplanetary. And let's um, compare that to what TransX is telling us. So a little bit faster. So I'm thinking, all right, so we are, we're on the day of departure, but we still have about half a day to go. So I wonder if, we should pass this launch window and take uh, the next one, but I, I worry that it might be too late. Let me just fast forward time here. So we are about 5,000 seconds. I think that's what that is, 5,000 seconds until our launch window. And we probably want to take off when there's about 350 seconds or so remaining. Okay, so we're getting close. We're under a thousand seconds. So now let me adjust the eject orientation here on TransX and compare what it's uh, what it's saying here. It looks like it's going to be the same. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So 43 degrees would be our launch heading right now. I guess it'd be 137 degrees would be the next launch window. I assume. Um, the question is, do we have enough time? before we're supposed to be ejecting earth orbit if we don't take off now there's a risk that we won't have enough time and i won't know until i fast forward time uh, otherwise we take off now and we have to sit in orbit for a bit maybe we'll just go ahead and take off now just to be safe Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's, we're going to have to take off now. If I'm thinking about this because uh, it was 55.431.6 when we were just getting started and it's already 55.432.2. So there's, I don't think we're going to have enough time. So we're going to take off now. Okay. All right. So it looks good. So we're going to be taking off to the heading of 43 degrees and let's just uh, fast forward time a little bit and get right up to our time to launch here. About 350 seconds will do it. There's 370. Okay, there's 350. All right, let's hop over into the cockpit and start getting uh, the spacecraft ready for takeoff. We'll turn on all of our lights. We need to close the cabin hatch. Make sure everything else is closed. That looks good. We will come down here and we're going to turn on oh. AF control surfaces. Uh, what else do we need? It's been a long time. Using External cooling is M2. off. I think that's it, guys. I think that's it. Let's go ahead and get our uh, attitude hold ready to go. That looks good. We need to turn on our surface HUD. That's what I was missing. And I think that is it. So let's go ahead and get our joystick over here and ready to go. Oh, all right. Hope you guys are ready for this. Hopefully don't crash and burn. We're under 300 seconds. And here we go, we are rolling. Full power and we're gonna 
pull the power back a little bit as we turn to uh, 40, what was it, 43 degrees. V1. Rotate. All right, rotate. Trying to get off the ground. Okay, Wheels back on the power. Yeah. Wheels coming oh. up. And we're going to turn to the left to 43 degrees. And let's go ahead and pull up the yeah, surface MFD left. over here on the left side. Would have been cooler if we could have launched during the day, but that's okay. Okay, just about to our target heading here. That velocity vector over there. And I'm going to start pitching up now. That's actually. Um, Turn on attitude hold, and we're going to start pitching up to about 45, 50 degrees. Go to full power here. And we're going to just try to get up above the thickest part of the atmosphere. And of course, we're going to use our scram engines as soon as we can to save some of that main fuel. Okay, so we're right on target with our heading here. And what we're going to do... As I recall, we're going to be watching uh, EIN here. We want to see this ticking down, and we want to get that on zero, if at all possible. So let's just see. I don't need the joystick anymore. Can move that over. And we're approaching 10 kilometers, so I'm going to start bringing the nose down a bit so we can build up some of that tangential velocity, I believe we call it which is uh, what we need to do to reach orbit here and start using those scram engines. So coming down, hopefully you guys can hear me okay with the, the audio. Let me turn it down just a little bit. Okay, hopefully that's better. Sorry if that was too loud with those engines. So you might notice from the webcam, I don't haven't usually played with a webcam in the past, so that's kind of new, but um, you might notice with a webcam that there's a big chunk of my monitor that's not getting used, and that's because this is a 4K monitor, and um, I just didn't really want to record this in 4K. The file would be huge, um, not to mention... Uh, uh, it's just I sit so close to it it's just it's just too much I really have to sit back so that's why the screen looks like that uh, alright so let's pay attention uh, ver a vertical speed is about 150 meters per second and that looks acceptable we're at about 20 kilometers in altitude uh, we're building up the tangential velocity I think we should be good to go ahead and uh, get our scram engines going bring that up kill the main engines and we have a positive rate of acceleration over here, so we're good. And we watch the temperature on the spacecraft. We, of course, can uh, put a little too much temperature on things. Uh, look at the external view. It looks fine right now, but we start seeing some, some plasma on the vehicle there. We're getting a little too hot. I think right now we're okay. Let's go ahead and nose down a little bit more. Okay, so again, I want to be paying attention to this EIN number here. I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm trying to watch that temperature there. Um, I'm gonna, first of all, let me pull up a, um, where is it at? Let me pull up an external MFT here. So we'll do surface there. And then over here, I want to go back to transx. I just want to compare this to interplanetary on this ascent. Getting a little hot. Let me nose up a little bit there. Swing this line of nodes over our position just a little bit ahead of it there. We can watch relative inclination over here too. See it's coming down there. Uh, I think it's going to be more accurate though on interplanetary. That's why I wanted to use this, the surface launch program, and kind of compare those two. All right, let's get the nose down a little bit. 
So as usual on my launches, I'm trying not to climb up too quickly here. I do want to kind of stay down in some of the atmosphere. As we're building up that tangential velocity, we're taking advantage of the lift from the wings of the spacecraft, and we're also using our uh, scram engines in the atmosphere to kind of build up that velocity, saving us uh, precious main fuel here. So, slows down a little bit more. We're already up at 47,000 kilometers, or 47 kilometers, I guess. I, uh, you have to forgive me, I tend to butcher the, uh, the distances <laughs> in this, uh, in the simulator. Uh, we are at 3,000, a little over 3,000 meters per second. Uh, orbital velocity is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood, if I remember, of 76, 7,800 meters per second. So we're not quite halfway there. You can see our orbit here. The gray circle is the Earth, and this is our trajectory, our current trajectory. It needs to go around the Earth, of course, for us to uh, complete an orbit. All right, so we're pretty much flying level right now, and of course now our temperature is coming up here. Uh, I also haven't been paying too much attention. Let's go ahead and turn on rotation, and I want to watch this EIN number and see which direction tends to help it more. Also watching relative inclination over here. So yawing to the left seems to definitely bring it down faster. We're going to yaw to the left and try and bring that relative inclination, that EIN number down as low as we can. Vertical speed looks good. Everything looks good. So uh, I guess anyways, while we're climbing up here, I'll talk about what I've been up to. Uh, any of you guys who've been following me for a while know that I got into day trading the stock market. And uh, that has definitely consumed a huge amount of my time. And I've been doing it for about four years now. I have a separate channel that I use for sharing uh, my journey in day trading and investing and everything in the stock market. I'll put um I'll put a card at the top of this video if you guys don't know about that channel, you want to check it out. Uh, I'll put a link in the description as well. Uh but anyways, yeah, I um th that's turned out to be quite a journey. Um it's very enjoyable. Uh, I lost money for the first couple of years doing it and now I'm making money. Uh, nothing like huge or anything, but it's really just a side hustle for me. I still own my own business, which is completely separate from investing in the stock market. And I still do that. Scram fuel is getting low, so we're almost out of scram fuel here. Um, so I still do my main business as my primary source of income, but uh, day trading has turned out to be a nice little side hustle. And um, scram fuel depleted. Okay, scram, let's get rid of, uh, let's close our scram doors. And we're gonna go full throttle. And let's pitch up a little bit more. We're at about 64 kilometers in altitude. I wanna be up a little bit higher than that. Uh, ideally, we're up around 75 kilometers or 80 kilometers in altitude by the time uh, we reach orbital velocity. So it uh, looks like I need to keep yawing to the left here, uh, not paying attention and I'm talking. Our EIN number is, is very high. I mean, it's it's, not crazy high, but it's way higher than I want it to be. Again, I want to try to get that to zero, so I'm going to have to do some aggressive yawing here to get that done by the time we reach orbital velocity, which is not going to be very long now. So let's do orbit MFD over here. We're just going to aggressively yaw over here to the left and try to get that EIN number as low as possible. Hopefully we can get that on zero. But uh, anyways, yeah, so I've been so busy doing that. Um, you know that I haven't I just it's like two jobs I haven't had time to to really play games let alone invest the amount of time that goes into making these orbiter videos for you guys uh, you know I do it for fun it's it's not a job so um, you know I kinda have to prioritize you know things in life and alright so uh, the EIN is under uh, one so that's good we are getting very close to zero I'm watching the apoapsis altitude up here on orbit MFD. I want to cut that off when we're up about 
250 to 300 kilometers, no higher than that. So EIN is almost at zero, so we can start yawing back over here. It's very close to zero. We just want to try to keep that as close to zero as we can for the remainder of the launch into orbit here. So it's like balancing a fine line. Okay, so we're getting ready. We're almost at Miko, watching Apoapsis. EIN's on zero, everything's happening fast. Apoapsis 160, 170, 180. EIN still looks good, and engine shut off. All right, so Apoapsis is up at 235 kilometers. That's perfectly acceptable. Uh, let's go ahead and deploy the radiator. Looks like we did pretty good on fuel. We used about 25% of our fuel just to get into orbit. I would suspect we're going to use maybe another 25 or 30%. I don't know, maybe a little bit more than that just for the ejection burn. Oh, I forgot to turn off AF control surfaces, but that's fine. Um, okay, so we are we are in orbit. We're not in a stable orbit. We do need to circularize the orbit. You can see we need to coast up here to Apoapsis and uh, do a burn up there. That is also at our ejection points. So we'll look at whether we we should just uh, go ahead and eject now and not worry about that or not. But anyways, uh, we're safely in orbit. How are we doing on time? We're yeah, I don't know if we're going to have time to do the injection burn. So let's just go ahead and see where we stand if we need to uh, if we need to uh, circularize the orbit or can we just do our ejection burn because that's kind of convenient. Our apoapsis is right at our ejection burn spot there. Okay, so um, let me see. We are ejecting. Let's go back to... Transex over here. Again, forgive me, guys. I'm going to be fumbling around all over the place trying to remember where to go. Uh, 55, 432, 6280. Hmm. Let me do this. If we set up a maneuver and we go to prograde and just put a little bit of prograde in just so we can see this, and then we go to the date, and this is going to be super sensitive. We go to hyper. So if we move the date over to our ejection point, the time would be 0.2732 and we need it 0.6280. So how many orbits do we have to do? So that's one orbit. So we're definitely not going to burn um, this orbit because that's two orbits, three. So it looks like at least four orbits. There's four. That's really close. Five. Yeah, it looks like, wow, perfect. Look at that. Six orbits away will get us right over uh, the ejection point. Perfect. Okay, so we're not going to do the ejection burn right now, so that answered my question. So let's um, let's turn off maneuver mode here. There we go. And we're just going to circularize the orbit right here. So let's coast up to, and for that we can actually use... Um, Interplanetary, I think you go to Menu, Orbital, and let's go to Orbit MFD over here. All right, so we are going to coast up to Apoapsis, circularize, circularize the orbit. Check that out. Wow. It's been a while. That is amazing. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get up to Apoapsis. We'll circularize the orbit, and then we will end this part here. We'll make sure and save this as well, and uh, I'll, I'll try to make these scenarios available to you guys somehow. Um, I'll post a link in the description below. That is just that is just impressive looking. Wow, I forgot how much I missed Orbiter. Okay, so we are coasting to Apoapsis, just a little bit further, speed time up. Okay, so let's... Um, we're going to use to be fuel efficient here. Let's go to the orbit HUD. We're going to use just rotation and time acceleration to try and. Uh, oh, you know what? I still have. Uh, I still have level hold on. That's what's going on. There we go. We're going to spin over, pitch up. Instead of just uh, slamming the. Uh, Prograde hold autopilot.
And I'm also looking here at the circularize uh, program on interplanetary. So we want that cross right in the center and we're, uh, yeah, we need to burn. We'll hit auto burn and let that circularize the orbit. Okay, we are now in a stable orbit with an altitude at 239 kilometers. So we will uh, we'll end this part here, guys, and uh, we'll come back and uh, go ahead and get the burn out to Venus con conducted. Uh, depending on how much time we have, we'll see how far we get with that part. But uh, as always, guys, I really appreciate you watching. It's good to be back with the series with you guys. Uh, so until the next one, take care, and I will see you guys then. Yeah.